Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today's video is part three of series of different contact point heights. So we're covering high balls today. And if you haven't seen the low contact point video or the medium contact point video, I will give you a link in the description. So today we're checking out how to handle high balls. And as usual, I will give you pros, cons, most common mistakes and the main tactical guideline. So high balls usually cause problems to players, but I want to give you a little bit different perspective in this video. So hopefully that's going to help you out manage these difficult situations better. So let's start with the video. What about high contact point balls? Uh, these are mostly problematic balls. So if we're talking about pros, what is a pro? I can give you one that uh, is very important when you play moon bowlers, that they frustrate you with these high balls. So the pro of high ball is that you are not in time pressure. You have a lot of time, especially if you're receiving a moon ball. You have time, so appreciate that. It, you know, I would prefer to have a slow moon ball than facing a server that can hit 130 miles an hour serve because at 130 miles an hour serve, I am not in control. I, I am in big trouble. When I receive a slow high ball, I am in control. I just cannot attack it. So you, you have to accept that from here you are neutralized, you're getting a high ball, you are neutralized. But the ball by itself is not very difficult to hit. Just difficult to hit a good ball. So don't even attempt to hit a really good ball from here just play the ball deep so i will mention that in the tactics section right so the pro is basically the ball is is you're not in time pressure it's no big deal but otherwise you are neutralized so what are the cons of high balls well as i mentioned you're neutralized so you have the least amount of downswing or zero downswing it is the least comfortable and effortless uh, forehand or backhand, so it's not comfortable. You don't get a lot of easy power, so you have to generate power yourself. But again, from tactics point of view, we are not looking for power from this contact point. We're looking for control and depth. So the stroke is not comfortable. You have to deal with it, play the, the ball back and wait for the next opportunity. When it comes to stances, lower level players will struggle a lot if they try to play high ball in neutral stance i'll try and show what happens so what happens usually that they're late so they get a high ball and they're hitting like this the the hips don't rotate so it's much better that you try to handle high balls in open stance so at all levels even at pro level you will see that high balls are mostly hit open stance you can play high ball in neutral stance but you have to take it very early you have to start the stroke very early so that you're not late so uh, a high level player will be able to take a high ball in neutral stance sometimes maybe when they have a mid-court ball uh, but maybe lower level players will struggle so my advice to you is learn the open stance don't automatically step into the ball uh, try to handle high balls in open stance. So what's the most common mistake? I think I will mention too, one I mentioned already, so stepping in is a common mistake. And then another mistake is trying to hit the ball down. So when players try to hit, I'll try and demonstrate, when players try to hit the ball down, a lot of it goes in the net like this one that I just hit, or the ball will be short it's going down too much, it's it will be short and it's going to bounce right into the strike zone of your opponent. So it's going to bounce relatively low, like it's perfect height, and then your opponent has no trouble with that ball. So that's the most common, like, tactical mistake. When you have a high ball, you're playing it down and making it easy for your opponent. So don't do that. Play the ball back either horizontally or slightly up and give them the same problem that you were just facing. So if this is uncomfortable for you, it's also uncomfortable for your opponent. So if you get a high ball, play it straight or slightly up and give them the same problem. 
in. So high contact point, like I mentioned before, you have to accept you are neutralized if you're behind the baseline. It's the least effortless stroke, the least comfortable. And it's not so difficult to hit the ball, but it's difficult to hit a good ball. So I suggest you don't even try it. So don't try to hit with power, don't hit downwards. Your main tactical objective is depth. And you're going to get depth if you play the ball from high contact, either at least horizontal or slightly up. So don't try to create angles from here. Don't go for maximum power. Just understand that you're neutralized and try to give the same annoying ball that's annoying to you, it's difficult to you. Uh, give the same ball to your opponent and stay in this until something happens, until you get a shorter ball from where so shorter or lower from where you can build up the point. All right, we try a bit left, right, Kaya, high balls, forehand, backhand. So I'm getting a high ball, this ball, I'm just playing back deep, nothing special. If it's difficult for me, it's difficult for my opponent. So I'm trying to find the right depth and speed. This one is a bit long. This one is a bit short, was not so clean. This one is perfect, so I'm going a bit more horizontal. This one not so high, but I was a good ball. So again, something like this, not really struggling to hit a great shot. Yeah, like this. Just hit across, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, how to handle high balls. Just swing across, you can spill the ball, spin the ball sideways, no problem. High back ends are difficult, just pull across play the ball deep and wait for the next opportunity. I want to give you just one uh, technical tip on high one-handed backhand that can uh, help you out. So what tends to happen is that players are maybe preparing like this. So let's say the arm, the elbow is relatively low compared to the shoulder. So for a normal height ball like my personal style, one normal ball, Kaya. So I would prepare like this. We try again. So here and then back end works fine. So clean shot works, everything fine. But if I get a higher ball and I kind of prepare here, then I get the ball here. Here I will swing up a lot. Let me try and show you the wrong way. Uh, I get a high ball and I'm here. You can see already a uh, problem might happen. Yeah, here we go. So I go here, then I have to go high. So the only thing I can do is a moon ball. So getting a high ball on the back end, prepare higher. So if I can read out oh, this ball is higher, I can prepare higher, then I pull across. Just play the ball back deep. That's it, that's just inside the baseline. And I'm staying neutral. So I've been neutralized. I cannot attack from this position. I try to give the same problem to my opponent. So just remember to prepare higher and pull across. So that might help you. So the same would apply for the forehand. But in my experience, players don't struggle with that a lot. They already typically have higher preparations. So if the ball's a bit higher, they tend to handle high balls fine. But I see this problem more on the back end. Players go here, like always, then high ball, then problems. So see if this tip works for you for high back ends. Okay, so I hope this video helped you get a better perspective on how to play different contact points. So different heights of forehands and back ends. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer and then stay tuned for part two of this video where I'll be hitting slice shots. So I'll be hitting both forehand and backhand slice shots and also volleys at different contact points. And we're going to follow the same process. So I'll give you pros and cons, the most common mistake and the main tactical guideline. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.